All right, let's talk about physician mortgages. It's that time of year, right? This is running mid-March and everybody's interested in getting a new home. It's spring, we're coming into summer and everyone wants to buy a home. And uh, if you're like a lot of doctors, you don't want to put much money down on that home because you have such great uses for your money elsewhere, whether it's maxing out retirement accounts, paying off student loans, building up your emergency fund, paying off credit cards, paying off a car, whatever it might be. It seems that doctors, especially doctors just coming out of training, have a lot of uses for money, uh, far more than they have cash. So a frequent question that we get around here is, how can I get someone to loan me money for a home right now? And I often wish the question was a little more sophisticated, such as, should I buy a home at all? Uh, you know, and my answer to that one is that you should buy a home when both your professional and your personal life is stable, right? If you think you might be getting married six months from now, it's not time to buy a home. If you think uh, you might leave your job soon, it's not time to buy a home, right? But when both of those are stable, then it's probably an okay time to buy a home. Another question that I wish people would ask more often is, should I use a doctor mortgage or a conventional mortgage? And that answer really comes down to the alternate alternative uses for your money. If you have some other really great uses for your money, it's okay to use a doctor mortgage and put a little bit less down. If you don't have such great uses for your money, shoot, get a conventional mortgage and use that money for a down payment. But such is life. So the question we get most of the time is, how can I get someone to loan me money to buy a home right now? Well, if you're a doctor without much money to your name, the answer to this question is usually a physician or a doctor mortgage. And they're available to people that aren't doctors, right? MDs and DOs obviously qualify. Most of the time, dentists will qualify for these loans as well. Everybody else, it just depends on the lender. Some lenders do and some lenders don't. To pharmacists, to nurse practitioners, to PAs, uh, veterinarians, attorneys, um, physical therapists, occupational therapists can qualify for these with some lenders, but it just depends on the lender. Uh, there's a post on the blog that talks about uh, doctor loans for other professionals that goes into details as far as which lenders will lend to, to other allied health professionals and other high income professionals. Um, but for the most part, we're talking about physicians and dentists when we're talking about doctor mortgages. So, we're going to answer a couple of listener uh, and reader questions about mortgages. But first, let's talk a little bit about what's new with physician mortgages this year. Uh, it's obviously a product that's used frequently by white coat investors. Um, you can get more information about the lenders that offer these in your state at whitecoatinvestor.com slash doctor loan. Um, but there have been a couple of changes. One is due to the pandemic and the economic uncertainty, some lenders are requiring you to have more money in reserve. That can be as much as 12 months worth of mortgage payments, right? So if your mortgage payment is three grand a month, they might require you to have 36,000 bucks sitting in a checking account, preferably a checking account of their bank in order to give you a doctor mortgage. So be aware of that. Uh, the most appealing feature of a doctor mortgage, a physician mortgage loan, of course, is that you can put down less than 20% and not have to pay PMI, which is private mortgage insurance. Remember, that's the mortgage, in, that's the insurance you buy to protect the lender from you defaulting on the loan. It doesn't actually do you any good whatsoever. So avoiding it is a good thing. There's really no benefit to you paying it. And you can avoid paying it by putting 20% down and getting a conventional mortgage, or you can avoid paying it by qualifying for a doctor mortgage. Um, last year, though, some lenders went from requiring uh, from not requiring a down payment at all, essentially 0% down to requiring 5% down. And some went from 5% to 10%. Um, some of those are coming back down now, but don't be surprised if the deal is a little bit worse than it used to be uh, before the pandemic. Um, so don't be surprised if you have to put down 5 or 10% in order to get the loan. Um, all right, let's do some questions. Here's one from the WCI forum. I'm a graduating resident and developing my financial strategy, both long and short term. I have a stupid amount of student debt, $480,000. I've currently budgeted out projections for next year and will be able to afford to pay off eighty-five dollars to $90,000 of loans a year. I have no credit card debt. Uh, the rent in the area my wife and are moving to is looking like two to two and a half thousand dollars a month in a tight market. So my question is, if I do a physician mortgage in year two with a minimal down payment, can I refinance later into a 15-year fixed with a more favorable rate? 
My wife is pregnant with our first, so she won't be working for at least six months after I start the job. I could save up $60,000 needed for a down payment, would, but would have to dramatically decrease my loan payoffs to do so. What are your thoughts? It seems to me that buying a home in year two makes the most sense than paying the same amount in rent as a mortgage. Now, this is the classic dilemma, right? This is what everybody's dealing with. Do I use my money to pay down my student loans or do I use it for a down payment? Well, if you're ready to buy a home, meaning your professional and personal life are stable, and that's often six to 12 months after you move to a new city out of training, um, then either one is okay with me. I'm not going to tell you you can't use a physician mortgage. I think it's a reasonable thing to do, especially when you got $480,000 worth of student loans to pay off. However, remember, if you're in a financial situation like that, buying a house doesn't get you out of the live like a resident period. So the house you are buying ought to be relatively inexpensive. This is not the final doctor house that you're buying when you're in a financial situation like this. Okay, you're getting a doctor mortgage, yes, but you're not getting it on the massive, huge doctor house that you'll be able to afford easily in 10 or 15 years. This is the home that you're going to live in for your two to five years while you're paying off your student loans, maybe for a few years after that, right? Everyone's going to find that compromise somewhere in there. But if buying this home means that you are paying off your student loans over eight or 10 or 12 years instead of two or three years, I think you're buying too much house. So different question, right? How much house should you buy versus how should you pay for it? What kind of mortgage should you get? And don't let the fact that there is a physician mortgage available cause you to buy too much house. So what would I do in this situation? Well, I think this is probably okay to buy a uh, house with a physician mortgage, a minimal down payment. I think that's probably a reasonable thing to do. It sounds like this doc's going to have the student loans paid off within five years. So that's living enough like a resident, I think. Um, but the question here is, if I do a physician mortgage in year two with a minimal down payment, can I refinance later into a 15-year fixed with a more favorable rate? Well, you can refinance, right? You may have to have 20% in equity at that point, whether it's from paying down the loan, bringing more money to the table, or from appreciation of the house, but you can certainly refinance later. Will it be a more favorable rate? Well, that depends on what interest rates do in the future. No guarantees, right? Um, if interest rates climb dramatically between now and then, you may want to just stick with the, the rate you got with the physician mortgage. Um, but if rates are similar to what they are now, then you'll probably be able to refinance later into a lower rate, into a 15-year um, fixed conventional mortgage. All right, next question. Uh, my girlfriend and I are residents. We have three years left in residency and are looking to buy a house. We are currently paying $1,800 for rent in an apartment building. Home rentals are $1,500 to $2,500 for outdated homes. To purchase a recently renovated home will cost $220,000 to $250,000. I can get a 30-year fixed physician mortgage loan with 0% down with 3% interest. Is it worth all the costs and fees to buy a house and sell it in three years than to spend that time paying $1,800 each month for rent. Ugh. Residents most of the time should not buy homes, okay? Especially if they're not in a stable professional and personal situation. Living with your girlfriend is generally not a stable personal situation. It usually goes one of two ways within just a few years. You usually either get married or you break up. Now, if it works out that you get married, okay, fine. You know, that's obviously become stable eventually. But as a general rule, you don't want to buy a house with somebody that you're not married to. It just gets really ugly. Far better for one of you to buy the house and the other one to rent from you or to uh, live there free or whatever. But in the event that you break up, it's very clear what happens with the house, right? Make it very clear from the beginning what's going to happen if you break up because this is a business transaction. In marriage, there are some protections there. Um, you know, you go to court or mediators or arbitrators or whatever, and you sort it out. Uh, when you are not married, it becomes very unclear, and it's really about uh, whose name is on the title. And it's a lousy time to be trying to get somebody's name off the title when you're not even speaking to each other. So in general, I don't think residency is a great time to buy. Um, I don't think it's a good idea to buy with somebody that you're not married to. Um, and, uh, you don't justify it just because, you know, you can, you can rent a house and the mortgage payments may be a little bit less than rent. Mortgage payments are supposed to be less than rent. Imagine you're a real estate investor, right? If the mortgage costs more than the rent, then you're losing money on that 
uh, on that property, right? The rent has to be dramatically more than the mortgage because not only does it have to pay for the mortgage, it has to pay for all the other expenses associated with the property and provide you some profit. So don't just compare mortgage to rent. That's a mistake a lot of people do. They start looking at $1,800 a month as throwing money away. No, you're not throwing money away. You're exchanging it for a place to live. When you buy a house, you throw a lot of money away too. Interest, property taxes, maintenance, transaction fees, all that is throwing money away just like renting is, right? You're just exchanging it for a place to live. All right, so if you need a doctor loan, Check out what's available at whitecoatinvestor.com slash doctor loan. We have a list of lenders in every state uh, that can provide you a physician loan. Remember the components of that. The primary one is that you can put down less than 20% and not pay PMI. But also in general, they will take a contract, an employment contract, rather than requiring you to have pay stubs. And so you can buy the home before you actually start working. That's another big benefit of a doctor loan. Now, if you're going to be an independent contractor or otherwise self-employed, you're going to run into some problems there. Sometimes it can be worked out, but a lot of the time you're still going to have to have a year or two of demonstrated income on your tax forms in order to get that loan. So expect that. If you are going to be self-employed, expect to run into that issue with any mortgage, whether it's a doctor loan or not. The other thing that you can usually get with a uh, doctor mortgage loan is that they will only look at the payments that you have to make for your student loans rather than how much you owe in total. So if you're on some you know, uh, repay program and your payments are $200 a month, they're only going to look at that rather than the fact that you owe $480,000 in student loans. So those are the big benefits of a physician mortgage loan. Uh, use them wisely. Um, they can be reasonable to use. I'm not going to go all Dave Ramsey on you and say you can't buy a house until every cent of your student loans are paid off, but you need to be wise about it. You need to have a plan for those student loans. You need to have a plan to build wealth. You don't want to let just the fact that somebody will loan you money cause you to borrow more money than you should and buy more house than you should. My dad, your host, Dr. Dahl, is a practicing emergency physician, blogger, author, and podcaster. He is not a licensed accountant, attorney, or financial advisor, so this podcast is for your entertainment and information only and should not be considered official, personalized financial advice.